एवरीवन हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग फाइन सो एज यू ऑल नो द जेई मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन इज वेरी नियर सो द स्टूडेंट्स हुआ प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर 2024 ट्वेंटी फोर जेई एग्जामिनेशन मस्ट बी मस्ट हैव अ गुड ग्रीप ऑन ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट और राइट सो फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन वर्ड्स वॉट आई प्लान ऑन ऑन स्टार्टिंग आई न्यू सीरीज ऑन जेई मेन्स प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स आई विल बी कवरिंग ईच एंड एवरी चैप्टर्स ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स and on each on every one video i will be covering all the important 10 to 15 previous year questions which are very favorable to be coming in your particular examination all right so this particular pyq series is going to be very beneficial to all the students who have covered the topics and are looking for a rank boosting session all right so what i can suggest you that once you prepare these previous year questions this important previous year questions you can definitely try out the same type of problems and definitely these kinds of problems will only revolve around in your jee mains examination paper all right so i will be starting with the straight lines as you all know the straight lines and conic section plays a very important role in jee mains topics because these chapters are not very theoretical but uh, only you need to remember the important formulas and concepts all right so you can for j means point of view what you can try out is basically you can remember for the conic sections what i would suggest is the important equations of tangents and the equations of normals all right so i know this particular chapters are kind of becomes theoretical at the part of the end but if you prepare all the important topics and concepts at very nice level then you can definitely ace your plus 4 uh, marks in this particular topics okay so i will starting with the straight lines All right. So if you are someone who has prepared the chapters of straight lines in your class 11, all right. So you can watch this particular video. Who are preparing for a JEE 2024 examination? All right. And what I would suggest, if you are someone who have completed your preparation, you can definitely revise this particular chapters along with me. And also you can also watch some one shot to complete the particular chapter and start watching or start solving these important previous year questions. So that is my take on these previous year question sessions. So let us get started on straight lines previous year session number one. All right. So stay tuned for this particular previous year session. And if you are someone who is new to this particular platform, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss out any upcoming content. I hope these particular videos are playing a great role to your preparation. All right. So let us get started. So today's goal will be basically to solve the JEE mains top important questions on straight lines. All right. So let us get started. And the very first question is on the screen. So if you are someone who has completed your preparation, then what I would request you to basically pause this question at the given moment and try out this problem on your own. And just after you are done with the solution, just done with your problem approach, or you have done with your answer, then just wait for the minute, and you can play the video and wait for until I give the answer. All right. You can also learn the way I solve the question to. Uh, understand better the concepts i know you might have a better approach or maybe a shortcut but yeah both the things are equally beneficial for your preparation and tell your answers and once you are able to tell your answers then do mention in the comment section that how many of you of the questions were correct so try to give your score out of 10 in the comment section i will be waiting for all your comments so let us start with the first problem the problem says that there is a point Which is labeled as alpha comma beta, and this particular point is known as the ortho center of a triangle ABC. So the triangle ABC with the vertices are given as A, B, and C. So it is asking you for the value of alpha and beta. So once you are able to find the value of alpha and beta, that is the ortho center of the triangle ABC, then you are basically able to calculate this expression. All right. So let us understand what does ortho center of a triangle means. So ortho center of a triangle. is basically the point of intersection of the altitudes is basically the point of intersection of the altitudes all right so ortho center is basically defined as the point of intersection of the altitude so for example from point a i drop an altitude on the side bc and from point b i drop an altitude on the side ac and from point c if i drop an altitude on the line segment ab then i get the point of intersection is known as the ortho center so i label this ortho center as o and in the question the ortho center is given as a alpha comma beta okay this is the ortho center now now we are given with the vertices of a b and c so let us write these vertices are so the a vertices is 3 comma minus 7 b is minus 1 comma 2 and c is 4 comma 5 all right so how to calculate 
the ortho center so this ortho center will pa will definitely pass through the line of inter will pass through point a and it will be perpendicular to the line bc so let me first of all calculate the slope of slope of line bc all right so let me calculate the slope of line bc so for the slope of line bc it is basically 5 minus 2 by 4 minus or minus 1 that is 5 and this will give, give me 3 by 5 so that means the slope of line bc is basically equal to 3 by 5 and we know a very important relation when that when two particular lines when two lines are perpendicular to each other the product of their slopes is basically equal to minus 1 all right so you must have known this particular concept if you are someone who has prepared this particular topic all right how this particular things comes this comes from the formula of angle between two straight lines all right so you know these things that angle between two straight line is given as tan alpha is basically uh, m1 minus m2 divided by 1 plus m1 into m2 okay you can put definitely mod on this side because you will get one obtuse angle and one acute angle all right so depending on the situation you can put a modulus over here all right so this will yield you the fetch you the correct result uh, so so let us and for tan alpha so alpha is 90 degree then tan alpha basically it is not defined or you can say it is tends to infinity that means when the denominator part is equal to 0 then only tan alpha is not defined that means m1 m2 is equal to minus 1 so from here what i can say that the slope of the line which is passing through a and o that means the attitude through a which is perpendicular to bc will basically we have the slope minus of 5 by 3 all right so if i am asking you to write the equation of the line which is joins these two points a and o you can definitely use the the one point and the slope approach to write the equation of the straight line that is y minus y minus of minus 7 that is y plus 7 is equal to is equal to slope what is the slope the slope is minus of 5 by 3 into x minus of x coordinate so what is the formula for writing this is this is the formula is given as x minus x1 into the slope of the line is equal to y minus y1 so this is the one point and slope approach of writing the equation of straight line all right so from here you will definitely get the slope of equation ao as 3y plus 21 is equal to minus 5x plus 15 all right so from here if you take this 5x on this left hand side you will get 5x plus 3y is equal to minus of 6 so let us label this as equation number one and similar fashion if you see in this particular triangle okay in a similar fashion for considering the point b that is minus one comma two if you drop a perpendicular or an altitude through b which is on ac so for that this will be perpendicular to ac line so and also it will pass through the point o so let us find the firstly the slope of line ac so for finding the slope of line ac what i do it is so you must have known the slope of a line is calculated by y2 minus y1 for two points whenever uh, of our points are given the slope is calculated as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 all right so i'm using that particular approach that is 5 minus or minus 7 divided by 4 minus of 3 4 minus 3 and this will give you 12 so from here you can say that the slope of the line which passes through b and o is basically equal to minus of 1 by 12 so from here you can definitely write the equation of line b o equation of line b o as y minus 2 is equal to minus of 1 by 12 times of x minus of minus 1 that is x plus 1 so from here if i simplify this as so this will become 12 y minus 24 is equal to minus x minus 1 so from here if i take x on the right left hand side this will x plus 12 y is equal to is equal to 23 this is the second equation and we what we have understood that the intersection point of line ao and ob basically gives intersect at point o that is a point o is common that means this particular on solving okay solving equation number one and equation number two we get point o that is alpha comma beta all right so from here let me solve these two equation that is y x plus 12 y is equal to 23 and the first equation was 5 x plus 3 y is equal to minus 6 
all right so from here what i can do i can multiply the first equation by 5 or maybe a better thing would be to multiply the second equation by 4 so if i multiply the second equation by 4 what i get the equation as so the first equation the, sorry the second equation according to my leveling all right and the and the first equation by multiplying by 4 it becomes 20x plus 12y is equal to minus of 24 so on solving this if you solve for this the 12y get cancelled and this will become minus 19x is equal to is equal to 1 because this will become plus uh, sorry not 1 i am very sorry this will become uh, 47 all right so this will become 47 so from here what i get so from here what i get i know that this is solving for x that means is x is equal to alpha so from here i get 19 alpha so from here what i will get is basically 19 alpha is equal to for minus of 47 okay so now let me check for whether i haven't done any mistake or not all right so let me check is there any mistake from my end or not all right so let me check for it uh, the what was the first equation the the slope of the line was uh, ac was basically equal to 12 and uh, the slope of the line bo so yeah it is it is perfectly correct okay so from here i got the value of alpha is minus 47 by 90 and similarly for from the value of x if i put the value of x from here on the on the second equation okay so in the similar fashion i'll get to the value of y as so you can do from here this particular equation also that is 3y it will become minus 6 okay minus of 15 into 47 by 19 okay so from here if you solve this you'll get the value of you'll get the value of, and you will divide by 3 then from here we know that y is basically the beta value so from here you will get the value of beta as from here you will get the value of beta as 121 by 57 so you will get the value of beta as 121 by 57 so you can solve this okay you can solve this and divide by 3 as well and you will get the value of beta that means the value of y so from here what i get the values of the ortho center the values of the ortho center i got the following as so the ortho center that is alpha comma beta is or is equal to minus 47 by 19 comma 121 by 57 okay so from here i got the required value now what i have to calculate is basically the value of is basically the value of 9 alpha minus 6 beta plus 60 okay so 9 into alpha it will become so you can calculate this is minus of 9 into 47 by 19 okay plus sorry minus of okay minus of 6 into 121 by 57 so you can cancel these terms okay 6 into 57 so you can cancel by 3 so this will be 2 and this will be 19 okay so i am cancelling out with 3 all right and plus of 60 so if you calculate this you can see the 19 19 19 and 9 into 47 now uh, this will become so it is 63 6 carried and uh, 423 so 423 minus 222 and uh, by 19 so this will become equal to you can calculate this on your own okay i am leaving this particular calculation as i should leave this particular calculation on you so this will become minus of 4 uh, 23 minus 242 by 19 okay plus 60 so from here if you solve this okay if you solve this you can definitely solve this and the answer will be equal to 25 i have solved this on my rough okay i have solved this particular thing on my rough so from here the right answer to this particular problem will be equal to option number c so i hope this particular discussion of this particular question was simple okay and clear so this is an important type of question that i wanted to take up because this is an important previous year question that i see that it, it comes repeating in many of the previous year questions so you can if you take up the previous year problems all right you will see this type of question gets repeated many numbers of time many number of time okay so i hope this particular idea was clear and from this particular idea if this type of question with some certain manipulation will come up then you will are in a position to definitely answer this particular problem i hope this particular problem was clear all right so let us move to the second problem all right the second problem is again on the important points of the triangle it says that there is a triangle which is formed by the lines okay so in this particular case the triangle is formed by the lines and the equation of lines are given 
in the previous problem what you see the triangle was given with the equation of the coordinate of the vertices whereas in this particular problem the equation of the line is given and from equation of line you have to get to the equation of the uh, i mean the coordinate of the vertices and after you get the coordinate of the vertices you can definitely use get to the centroid by using the formula of the centroid all right so it is saying that there is a triangle so let me assume this is a triangle okay any triangle let us label this as a this is b and this is c all right so let us write the equation so for equation of ab this will be equal to 15x minus y is equal to 2 let us write the equation of bc as 6y 6x minus 5 by is equal to minus of 4 and similarly the equation of ab as 9x plus 4 by is equal to 17 so only thing that you need to do is basically solve these three equations with uh, two of them okay taking two at a time you solve this equation you basically get to the point of intersection all right so let us do so okay so i hope you can definitely do this particular calculations as well simultaneously along with me all right so what i will be doing for point a okay so for point a so solving for point a i'll get 9x plus 4y is equal to 17 and this is y 15x minus y is equal to 82 all right so from here what i can do i can multiply this particular equation i can i can definitely go on and multiply i can multiply this particular second equation by 4 okay mm, yeah i can multiply the second equation by 4 and definitely add the both the equations so if i multiply and then add the both the equations so this will become 9x plus plus 60x that will become 69x and this particular term will get cancelled and is equal to so 17 plus 4 2 ja 8 and 4 8 ja is 32 so 3 to 8 plus 17 and that will become so this particular will become equal to uh, 345 so from here 69x is equal to 345 so from here the x if you solve for x and if you cancel out so you can cancel out by um it will be cancelled out of 5 okay so 5 yeah 5 9, 5 into 69 is basically equal to 345 so x value becomes equal to 5 and similarly if you get value of x equal to 5 you can solve for y y is equal to 4 y is equal to 17 minus 17 minus 45 okay 17 minus 45 so from here you will get the value of y as so if you can solve for 17 minus 45 you'll get the value of y as and this, this will become equal to uh, 28 okay minus of 28 so from here you will get the value of y s minus 7 so from here if you solve for these two particular equation you get to the first coordinate that is the first vertex is coordinate of first vertex that is a that is 5 comma minus 7 okay and similar fashion if you solve the for point b so let us solve for point b it will become 6x minus 5 by is equal to minus of 4 and 9x plus 4y is equal to 17 so let us multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2 so if i do so so and then subtract then the first term will get cancelled the x term will get cancelled and the term will be left out is basically minus of 15y and minus of 8y is equal to is equal to minus 12 and this will become minus 34 all right so from here if you see this will be equal to this will be equal to 15 and uh, so 23y minus of 23y is equal to minus of 46 so from here you get the value of y as 2 so from here you get the value of y as 2 and similarly for x if you put x so 6x is equal to minus 4 plus 5y and this will become equal to 6 so 6x is equal to 6 so from here you get the value of x is equal to 1 so from here i solve the second coordinate of the vertices of triangle b that is b is equal to 1 comma 2 so you got the coordinate of what is b that is 1 comma 2 and simultaneously if you solve for the other two equation for particular point c so if you are solving for c that is equal to 6x minus 5 by is equal to minus 4 and the first equation was 15x minus y is equal to 82 82 so if you multiply the second equation by 5 okay if you multiply the second equation by 5 and then subtract it so it will become and this is nothing okay this this is 75 minus 6 so this will again become minus of 69x and this particular term will get cancelled and similarly this will become minus 4 and minus of uh, this is this will be equal to 
four one zero. Okay, eighty two into five is basically equal to four one zero. So this is equal to minus of four hundred and fourteen. So from here we get the value of x is equal to minus of four hundred fourteen. So if you multiply it, um, this particular will be equal to. So you can check the this will be equal to x is equal to. Um, so from here, yeah, yeah, this will be six times. Okay, so sixty nine into six is basically equal to four four one four. You can check it. Okay, so this will be equal to six. So x is equal to six. And similarly, from here, if you put the value of x is equal to six on this first first equation, thirty six and thirty six plus four is basically equal to forty. And forty is equal to five by is equal to y is equal to eighty. So you can understand how mentally calculation I can perform. Okay. So this type of mental calculation you need to perform in your examination when you are basically approaching the CBT motor paper. So from here you already got to the three coordinates of this triangle. From here the triangle of coordinate of point C will be equal to six comma eight. And if you know the the formula of centroid, the how to calculate the centroid? Centroid is basically calculated by x one plus x two plus x three by three comma comma y one plus y two. Plus y three by three, okay. So from here, if you solve this, this will become equal to six plus so six plus five plus five plus one divided by three comma. And the second one will be minus seven plus two plus eight divided by three, okay. So from here, you get the value of coordinate of the centroid is equal to alpha comma beta is equal to. So you can sum up. This is twelve by three. That is four comma, and this will be equal to. Ah, uh, three by by three that is equal to one. So the coordinate of the centroid is equal to four comma one. So from here you got the coordinate. So the coordinate is mentioned in the question as alpha comma beta. That means the value of alpha is equal to four and beta is equal to one. Okay. Now you have to find the equation whose roots are basically this. That is alpha plus two beta. So first root will be equal to alpha plus two beta is equal to six and two alpha that is eight minus one that is equal to seven. So the two roots are basically six and seven. So what you can see from how to solve for by the just by eliminating the option. So the product of roots will be equal to forty two, and the product of root term is basically equal to this particular term divided by the coefficient of x square. So you can see the coefficient of x square in all the cases one, and the term which is present at the last without a, the coefficient of x that is x to the power zero is basically forty two. That is the option number B. So you don't need to solve. Okay, so don't need to form the equation, or if you want to know how equation forming is done, is basically x square minus alpha plus beta. Into x plus alpha into beta. Okay, so that's how we basically form the equation whose roots are basically given as alpha and beta. His roots as alpha and beta. So let me distinguish by alpha dash and beta dash. Okay, alpha dash and beta dash. So the equation is basically this. So from here, the right answer to this particular problem is basically equal to option number B. I hope this particular solution was clear. All right. So let me label this. This is the answer option number B. I hope you are able to solve this particular problem. Much faster than me. All right. So let us move to the third problem. Okay. The third problem is very important type of problem that you can encounter in your GMS previous papers. Okay. In many of the previous question, this particular type of problem was repeated many numbers of times. So you can definitely expect this type of question. And this particular problem is a basically a problem on on locus. Okay. So many students definitely when they study the straight line for the first time. They basically get difficulty in solving problems of locus, but this is a not a very difficult problem of locus. What you can see if you just read the question, you can definitely solve this particular problem. So let us try to and read out this particular problem. What the problem has to say? So it is saying that there is a point that alpha comma seven root three by three lies on the curve which is traced by the midpoint of the. So there is a term which is the midpoint. So this gives a hint of basically choosing the. Locus, the getting the condition of locus, because many times I have seen many students suffering to get to the condition of locus. They basically need can definitely find what is the value like uh, they put the equation, but they definitely lag out on getting the second condition because in locus problem basically need to solve for h comma k that is the coordinate of the unknown point or the variable point. All right, so for solving h comma k you need to have two equations. The very first equation is basically given in the problem, but the second equation they are unable to find. By their intuition, so this is an intuition type of problem. You need to also not to take hint of. Okay, so this is a curve traced by the midpoint of the line segment, and the line segment. This is a line segment. Now this is a variable line for different values of theta. The line will definitely go on changing. Now let me give you a definite feel like how this particular locus is a locus. Okay, so what is a locus? Locus is a is a path traced by a variable points. Okay, traced by a variable point under a given 
गिवेन सेट ऑफ कंडीशन अंडर अ गिवेन सेट ऑफ जोमेट्रिक कंडीशन और मे बी अ कंडीशन ओके सो वॉट इज दिस हैज टू से दिस इज सेट देर इज अ लाइन सेगमेंट सो देर इज अ लाइन सेगमेंट विच लुक्स लाइक दिस बट सिंस द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस इज अ वैल्यूएबल टर्म कॉस थीटा एंड साइन थीटा इज प्रेजेंट एंड सिंस थीटा इज वैरिड फ्रॉम जीरो टू फाइव बाई टू द लाइन्स विल गो ऑन वैरिंग ओके द लाइन्स विल गो ऑन वैरिंग इन डिफरेंट फैशन ओके इन डिफरेंट फैशन और लेट मी गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल लाइक हाउ कैन लाइन्स वैरी ओके सो फॉर डूइंग सो बट वॉट वी कैन सी दैट जीरो एंड फाइव बाई टू इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सीन ओके बिकॉज इफ यू पुट जीरो द कॉस थीटा टर्म विल बिकम इक्वल टू वन एंड द साइन थीटा विल इक्वल टू जीरो दैट विल गिव यू द इक्वेशन ऑफ लाइन एस एक्स इज इक्वल टू सेवन ओके एंड सिमिलरली पाई बाई टू विल ऑल्सो गिव यू द इक्वेशन ऑफ लाइन एस वाई इज इक्वल टू सेवन और राइट सो एक्स इज इक्वल टू सेवन एंड वाई इज इक्वल टू सेवन इज बेसिकली स्ट्रेट लाइन्स विच यू बेसिकली इंक्लोज द द पैरामीटर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रेट लाइन्स और राइट बट इट इज सेइंग दैट दे आर ऑन द ओपन इंटरवल जीरो टू पाई बाई टू सो द लाइन्स मे वैरी सो द लाइन्स मे वैरी ओके सो दिस आर देर विल बी लॉट ऑफ वैरिएबल लाइन्स सो द लाइन्स मे लाइक दिस लाइक दिस लाइक दिस ओके सो देर विल लॉट ऑफ वैरिएबल लाइन्स ओके सो वॉट विल बी वॉट वी कैन फाइंड सॉरी सॉरी फॉर माई नॉट वेरी पासिंग थ्रू वन पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ओके the lines will be like this okay some like this okay like this like this particular way so what i can see the midpoint is first line second line third line fourth line so they will basically trace a particular path okay so if you uh, plot the midpoint so these are the midpoints of this particular lines don't go by the geometric simulator to right arm okay but you can see that the midpoints of these lines are if they are traced they, then you will get a basically a curve then you will basically get a random curve so what we need to do we need to get the equation of this particular curve okay so getting the equation of curve is not very simple thing okay now let me be very very much clear the only curves that we basically know about the in mathematics is the conic sections okay now apart from conic section and there are some other 3d curves that we know the equation but but a uh, curve or sketching the equation of a curve is not a very simple task okay not a very simple task so for example when you will be solving some engineering application you will get a curve like this you will get curves like this okay so they will get a lot of different different curves okay and for this particular curves it is not very possible to definitely get to the equation of the curve okay so that we can definitely integrate or differentiate or apply the mathematical principles on those particular curves but what we can definitely do is basically approximate curves so that is a different idea but what i am trying to say is basically this particular curve and curve equation or getting the equation of curve is not a very simple job all right so have this particular idea that equation of a curve is not very simple job so if they if they are asking you the equation of any unknown curve they might be any particular given conditions okay which are very easy to deduce which are very easy to deduce and therefore on the basis of which you can definitely easily deduce the equation of the particular curve i hope this thing is clear all right so from here what i can see so if you plot the variable lines the variable line let me let me label this one of the variable line as a and b that means the point where this particular line intersect the x and y axis so this is the x axis and this is the y axis so what you can say the point b is the x coordinate or uh, x intercept and the y, a point is basically the y intercept so let me find for the x intercept so if i look for x intercept that is basically given out by y is equal to 0 and the value of x intercept will be equal to it will be equal to 7 by cos theta and similarly the value of the so this is origin so this x intercept is basically 7 by cos theta and similarly the y intercept okay the y intercept will be given by putting x is equal to 0 and this will give you 7 by sin theta okay now you have to look for the midpoint now if you have to look for the midpoint so let me label let me label the locus let the so you know all know that a locus problem is always solved by assuming that particular unknown or the variable point as h comma k so i am writing let the locus of the midpoints b h comma k okay so this is the first let so from here what you can see that this is the midpoint of a b that means this h comma k from here and now by if i have two coordinates of a point for example if i coordinate of point a uh, let me write this is a1 and this is a2 so if i have coordinate of point a to a1 a2 and these are basically uh, joining a straight line so if i have to find the midpoint so if i have to find the midpoint now let us label this midpoint as okay a dash 
then I have to basically do that is if, if this has x coordinate a coordinate has x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 so the x coordinate of the midpoint will be x1 plus x2 by 2 and similarly the y coordinate of the y midpoint will be y1 plus y2 by 2 that will give you the coordinate of the midpoint okay so from here if I have to look for the coordinate of h this will be basically be equal to 7 by cos theta plus 0 divided by 2 okay and similarly if I have to look for the value of k this will be basically equal to 7 by sin theta plus 0 by 2 so from here you get to the value of h as 7 by 2 cos theta and similarly you get to the value of k as 7 by 2 sin theta now what do you need to eliminate in order to get to the equation of the curve you need to eliminate the value of the h and k from this particular equation okay from here you have to eliminate h and k in order to get to the in order to get to the equation of the definite locus that means you have to eliminate the variable terms okay so that you get to the equation which is basically only in h and k okay so you need to eliminate the variable term so what is the variable term so as you can see that theta is a variable term so theta over here varies from open interval 0 to pi by 2 so that means theta is a variable parameter okay so it is a variable parameter so theta is a variable parameter so definitely you need to eliminate the value of theta from this particular and then get an equation which is only contain which will only contain h and k okay so what i know i know very important trigonometric identity that is sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 for all theta for all theta belonging to a real number all right so from here if i do this particular so from here i can get to the value of sin theta as 7 by 2 k and similarly i will get to the value of cos theta as 7 by 2 h so from here if i square and add i will get the answer as 1 so if i square and add it will become equal to 49 by 4 h square plus 49 by 4 k square is equal to 1 so from here if you solve this if you solve this you will get the value as 1 by h square plus 1 by k square is equal to 4 by 49 okay so now the equation of the locus now in place of a h and k you have to replace with x and y so the equation of the locus of that curve which is traced by the midpoint is basically equal to 1 plus x square 1 by x square plus plus 1 by y square is equal to 4 by 49 now in the question it is saying that alpha comma alpha comma 7 root 3 by 3 basically satisfy the equation of this locus that means it lies on this particular curve so from here if this particular lies on the particular curve then this particular point will definitely satisfy the equation okay so if you put the value then it will become 1 by alpha square plus 1 by so the 1 of 7 square will be 49 into 3 and 3 will go up and it will square up and then it will become 9 and is equal to 4 by 49 okay so from here i can cancel it out as 3 by 49 so this will become 1 by alpha square will on, on taking it on the right hand side it will become 1 by 49 so from here the value of alpha will equal equal to 7 because if we are said that alpha is a positive number okay so if it is said that alpha is a positive number then then i can definitely say that this value of al alpha is equal to 7 then i can say that definitely the value of alpha will be equal to 7 so from here the right answer to this particular problem will be equal to option number b okay so this thing is clear all right so let us move to the fourth problem and the fourth problem is again a very simple problem all right so it is said that the problem c it is saying that the c is the circumference center of a triangle which is formed by the lines so it is saying for the circumference center of our triangles and in place of coordinates we are basically provided with the equation of the line now this question seems very lengthy kind of problem and many students tend to leave this particular problem okay so what i would suggest to you instead of leaving this particular problem just try to find out the the slopes and try to relate whether any two of these sides are perpendicular to each other or not because if the slopes are perpendicular to each other that is a triangle uh, that is for a right angle triangle we know that for a right angle triangle the circumference center is basically the the uh, centroid or the midpoint of the hypotenuse line because in a circle so you must be knowing this all geometrical things because in a circle okay if there is a 
if there is a uh, i mean to say if in a circle okay and which is passing through a diameter if a line passing through a diameter and then if for any point on this circle okay for any point on this circle if the lines are joined if these lines are joined and the triangle is formed then this particular triangle will always be a right angle triangle will always be a right angle triangle that means the the circumcenter or the centroid of, the of this particular circle or the circle which centers the triangle is basically the the midpoint of the hypotenuse of the largest length that means the midpoint of this particular point okay the 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 line which is basically adjacent or opposite to the right angle all right so from here you basically get to the circumcenter of the triangle so let us look for the the sides of the triangle so the very first sign so let me label this as a this is b and this is c so the very first equation i write this a b equation as 4x plus 3y is equal to 69 okay and similarly let me label the equation of b c as okay so this will become 4y minus 3x is equal to 17 so and let me label the equation of a c as x plus 7y is equal to 61 now by observation what i see that if i find the slope of line a b i will get the value of slope of line a b as minus of minus of 4 by 3 and similarly if i solve for the slope of line b c i will get the value of b line of the slope of b c will be equal to 3 by 4 and from here what i can see that the slope the product of the slope of line a b and the line b c is equal to minus 1 so this may give me a very very important hint okay so this will give a very important hint that is a slope of the product of the slope of two lines is equal to minus one. That means the line AB and BC are perpendicular to each other. That means in this particular problem, instead of solving for the lengthy calculation or to get to the circumcenter, there is a very important geometrical implication which is given to simplify the particular problem. They are perpendicular to each other. And from here, if they are perpendicular to each other, then the centroid, sorry, the circumcenter of the triangle is basically the midpoint of AC okay so the only task in this particular problem will be to solve the point a and c okay so you basically reduce your steps of calculation okay so let us solve for point a so let us solve for point a so if i have to solve for point a the first equation you have to solve is basically 4x plus 3y is equal to 69 and the second equation you need to solve for 7y x plus 7y is equal to 61 so you can multiply the second equation by 4 and subtract it so if you do so, if you multiply the second equation by 4 and subtract it, the first term get cancelled and the term you are left out with basically equal to minus 28y and plus 3y that will become equal to minus of 25y which is equal to minus of 244 plus 69. So from here you get to the value of y as. So if you solve this, uh, so 14 minus and this will become uh, 5 and... Uh, okay so this will become equal to minus of 175 so minus 25 is equal to minus 175 so from here the value of y is equal to y is equal to 7 okay so from here you get to the value of y as 7 and if you have y as 7 that means 4x is equal to 20 4x is equal to 69 minus 21 so from here this will become equal to 48 and if you solve this for x you get to the value of x as 12 so from here you get to the value of the coordinate of point a as 12 comma 7 so you get to the coordinate of point a as 12 comma 7 okay and we have to solve for coordinate of point c so for solving for coordinate of point c i have to solve the equation minus of 3x plus 4y is equal to is equal to 17 and the equation x and the equation x plus 7y x plus 7y is equal to 61 okay so let us multiply the second equation by 3 and then add it so if you do so then on adding the x terms will get cancelled and this will become 21 plus 4 this is again become 25y which is equal to which is equal to 183 plus 17 and this will be equal to this will be equal to 200 so from here the value of y is equal to 8 and if you get the value of y is equal to 8 the value of x is equal to minus 3x is equal to 17 minus 17 minus 32 and this will be equal equal to minus of 15 so from here you get to the value of x as 5 so you got to the coordinate of point b c sorry the point c as so you got to the equation of point c, coordinate of point c that is 5 comma 5 comma 8 so you got to the equation coordinates and that means the circumcenter the circumcenter that is the center of the circle which is circumscribing the triangle 
will be basically equal to h comma k and this h comma k will be nothing but the midpoint of this particular point that means it is equal to so it will be equal to 17 by 2 and this will be equal to 15 by 2 so the coordinate will be 17 comma 17 by 2 comma 15 by 2 okay i hope this thing is clear so if you have done till now okay if you have done till much this then there is not much a calculation is left okay then there is not of a much calculation is left so from here the calculation which is left out so the calculation which is left out you have to solve for the equation alpha minus beta by sorry alpha minus beta whole square okay you have to solve for alpha minus beta whole square so alpha minus beta whole square plus alpha plus beta so alpha minus beta so that is 17 minus 15 by 2 that means equal to 2 okay that means equal to 1 sorry 2 by 2 that is 1 so 1 square is 1 and alpha plus beta is equal to 16 alpha plus beta is equal to 16 you can do it on your cell 17 plus 15 is equal to 32 32 by 2 is basically equal to 16 and the answer will be equal to 17 so from here the right answer to particular problem will be equal to option number b so the right answer will be option number b okay i hope this particular situation is clear again all right so this is a very simple problem but only thing that you must be aware in your examination that whenever there is an equation of line implying the triangle and they are basically able to calculate and you are given to calculate the important points then definitely try to understand whether the triangle is a right angle triangle or an equilateral triangle if the coordinates of the vertices are given then check for the equilateral triangle and if the equation are given then try to find whether the uh, triangle is a right angle triangle or not by the simply by checking the slope of the slides okay so this particular will definitely save your calculation a lot in examination point of view okay instead of going on and finding all the centroids and then you basically apply the formula of circumcenter okay so that is a very difficult process okay so i hope this particular thing was clear all right all right so this is a very important problem okay the problem looks very difficult at first okay but i hope you are basically if you read this particular problem and then understand the situation and try to make a rough diagram then you can definitely echo out this particular problem then you can definitely uh, solve this particular problem okay this problem has nothing to do with this a uh, lot of uh, difficulties so what is this the problem says that there is a two straight lines and the straight lines are labeled as l1 and l2 which passes through origin and they trisect the line segment of the line they basically trisect the line segment of the line of line 9x plus 5y is equal to 45 between the axes if m1 and m2 are the slope of the line l1 and l2 then the point of intersection of the line y is equal to m1 plus m2 into x and the with the line l and with the line l so what is the line l so let me draw the situation at first okay the situation says that there is a line okay so there is a line between the coordinate axis that is 9x plus 5y is equal to 45 that means the x coordinate will be equal to so the line looks like this the x coordinate of the line will be equal to 5 and the y coordinate of this line will be equal to 9 okay so it is saying that there is a line which passes like this okay and in the first coordinate okay the line l1 and l2 basically trisect so if line l1 and l2 passes through origin and they trisect that means basically they divide this line this particular line segment so let me call this line segment as a and this is b so this is line segment a b so this lines l1 and l2 basically divides the line segment a and b in three parts three equal parts okay so this is basically three equal parts that means in order to get the point of this particular intersection of line l1 and the line ab that is basically the division of the ratio 1 is to 2 okay so this particular point let me call this particular point as a1 and this particular point as a2 so the point a1 divides the line segment ab in 1 is to 2 ratio and similarly the point a2 divides the line segment ab in 2 is to 1 ratio so that's the only implication that you must understand from this particular problem that is by this particular word that is the intersection okay the word is here used is basically intersection okay or oh, sorry trisection i am very sorry trisection all right so let me go on further and solve for it so the point a is basically 9 comma 0 and the point b is basically 0 comma 5 so in order to get to the point of coordinate of a1 so a1 divides so if i say this is a and b line segment so the point a1 and a1 divides the line segment in two in, sorry one is to two ratio okay so this divides the line into in the ratio of one is to two okay so if i have to use a section formula so the section formula will be equal to two into nine plus one into zero divided by three comma this will be equal to one into five 
ओके सॉरी वन इंटू जीरो वन इंटू जीरो प्लस टू इंटू प्लस ओह सॉरी वेरी सॉरी वन इंटू फाइव व्हाट एम डूइंग वन इंटू जीरो वाई वन इंटू जीरो दिस इज़ ली वन इंटू फाइव ओनली ओके सो वन इंटू फाइव इंटू टू इंटू जीरो डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री सो दिस इज़ गिव द कोऑर्डिनेट ऑफ़ पॉइंट ए वन एस एटीन बाय थ्री कॉमा फाइव बाय थ्री so from here if we have if we know the point origin because this line l1 passes through origin so from here i can definitely calculate the slope of line l1 that is m1 is equal to is equal to x1 x2 minus x1 divided by y2 minus y1 that is 18 by 3 minus 0 divided by 5 by 3 minus 0 so from here you get to the slope of the first line as 18 by 5 so the l1 so the how is the m1 the slope of the line l1 is equal to 18 by 5 and similarly similarly fashion if you have to solve for the point a2 so this is ab line segment and the point a2 is basically divided in the line segment in the ratio 2 is to 1 so therefore a2 is basically equal to a2 is basically equal to 2 into 0 plus 1 into 9 by 3 comma comma 2 into the y coordinate of point b that is 5 plus 1 into 0 by 3 okay and this particular will give you the coordinate of point a2 as 9 by 3 comma comma 10 by 3 so from here you go to the coordinate of a2 so if you have the coordinate of a2 the slope of the slope of line l2 that will be m2 is basically equal to y2 minus y1 that means basically you have 10 by 3 by 9 by 3 and that is equal to 10 by 9 And that is equal to ten by nine. Okay, so that particular is equal to m one is equal to eighteen by five, and m two is equal to ten by nine. So if you have the uh, so from here the equation of the the line which you need to find is basically m one plus m two into x is equal to y. So from here if you solve for these particular values, okay. So from here if you solve for these particular values, okay, and you can definitely do this. It's very simple. Okay. Uh, did I do any wrong? Okay, let me check for it. Okay, uh, just a second. So this is equal to ten by three comma. Ah, uh, there is a mistake from my end only. Uh, like the point A is basically zero comma nine. Okay, sorry, sorry. And the point B is basically equal to five comma zero. So the point B is basically equal to five comma zero. So I have done this particular great mistake. This will be equal to one into nine for for the y coordinate. So it will be equal to this is equal to one into nine plus zero divided by three, and this particular value will be equal to two into five divided by three. So this will be equal to two into five, and this is equal to zero. So that's a big blunder from my side. Okay, because I wasn't seeing the question. I'm sorry. So this will be equal to ten by three comma. Nine by three, and from here the slope will be equal to the, this particular value is wrong, and the slope is equal to nine by ten. Okay, the slope is equal to nine by ten. So from here the equation of the line will be equal to nine by ten plus eighteen by five into x. So what I can do this I can write by multiplying the second particular fraction into two into two on both the side. It is thirty six plus nine. That will be equal to forty five by ten into x. So from here. Y is equal to forty-five by ten into x, and its intersection with the line L. That is, that is line is basically given as nine x plus. So the line you have to solve for that is nine x plus five y is equal to forty-five. So if you saw in place of y, you put forty-five by ten. So in place of y, if you put forty-five by ten, so forty-five by ten. So five into forty-five by ten is forty-five by two. And if you minus forty-five by two, if you subtract forty-five by two, you'll get the value of nine x as forty-five by two. So from here, you get the value of x as you get the value of x as five by two. So if you have the value of x as five by two, then you can definitely calculate for y as forty-five by ten into five by two. Okay, so that will give you again forty-five um, by ten only. Okay, so that will give you forty-five by ten. Okay. So that will again give you forty-five by ten. So y is equal to forty-five by ten, and x is equal to five by two. So that means the with these particular values, they lie on the which of the line. 
So the question is asking you which of the following line basically satisfy the the equation that is that you got the in point of intersection as uh, the point of intersection as you got it as five by two. Okay, so you got the line in intersection point as. Five by two comma okay five by two comma forty five by ten. So what you can see is this is basically nine by two okay. So five by two by nine by two. So if you subtract it okay, so you can subtract this. So what you can see from the the equation only which satisfy the only equation which satisfy okay the only equation which satisfy is basically option number. Mm, I believe I have done a mistake okay. Let me check it. Okay, once again, I've done a blunder, maybe. Okay, so this is uh, so this is a uh, nine x plus forty five x. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry from my end. This is forty five x. Okay. So this is nine x plus forty five x by two is equal to forty five. So this is a very big blunder. This is a blunder. Okay. This is a blunder. All right. I'm very sorry. I wasn't focused enough to solve for these calculations. Okay. So if you are focused enough and you're solving the calculation, definitely don't make these particular silly errors. Okay. So this will give you seven x by two is equal to five. So from here, x is equal to x is equal to ten by seven. And if you put x is equal to ten by seven, you get the value of y is equal to y is equal to forty five by seven. And if you have the point of coordinates as as ten by seven and Forty-five by seven. Okay, so the coordinates are for ten by seven and forty-five by seven. Okay, so from here the only equation which satisfies is basically option number C. So you can track, you can put this particular coordinate in this particular y minus x is equal to five. So you can see y minus x is equal to five. Yeah, it is correct. That means this particular satisfies the option number C. So option number C is the right answer to this particular problem. I hope this particular solution was clear. Okay. And let us move further and solve the sixth problem. So this is another very simple problem. If you know the formula, you can definitely solve this particular problem in very short period of time. So the question says that the combined equation of two lines. That is basically the question is talking about the question on pair of straight line. Instead of asking you the angle of bisector of the line, a pair of straight line directly, it is saying that if there are two lines and then they can be combined and write the equation as this particular fashion then you have to find for the angle bisector as if the questioner the question setter is trying to confuse you by giving you that this is a different different thing this is a new approach okay or maybe something a different things which you you don't know okay but if you have studied the pair of straight lines okay if you aren't studied with the pair of straight line we know that pair of straight line is basically the conic equation okay The equation, the general equation of conic, that is given as x square plus two h x y plus b y square plus a f square plus b a f square plus b. Uh, sorry, I'm writing for the general equation of. Uh, I'm writing for the general equation of. Um, pair of straight line. Yeah, it will be equal to b y square plus two h x y plus Uh, plus two g. Sorry. So for general equation of pair of straight line plus two, this will become equal to plus two g x plus two f y plus some constant is equal to zero. And you know that this particular pair uh, equation is sim sim similar equation to the conic equation. Okay. And this is also similar to the conic equation and which satisfies the value of delta is equal to zero. And delta is basically the value of this determinant. You put the determinant as a b c over here. And then you put, and then you put the terms g over here and g over here, h over here and h over here, and then you put f over here and f over here. So if you calculate the value of determinant, this particular determinant, then you get to the value of delta is equal to zero. And if delta is equal to zero, then this particular cone is basically represent the pair of straight lines. Okay, so we all know this particular thing. If you have studied it in detail, then you know these things. Okay, so it is saying that the equation of pair of straight lines. Okay, the equation of pair of straight line is basically two x x square plus x y minus three y square is equal to zero. So this is a pair of straight line which is passing both of them passing through zero, both passing through zero comma zero. That means the both of them are passing through origin. Okay, so both of them straight lines are basically passing through origin. So it is basically trying to talk of a situation that there is a one straight line 
and there is another straight line okay so this is a basically a pair of straight line and then they are basically asking you to find the equation of this this particular straight line or the pair of straight line okay the angle bisector so this line and this line when they are multiplied together to produce the angle the pair of straight line which is a pair of angle bisectors so if you have studied the angle bisector so the angle bisector of a pair of straight line is basically given out by the formula x square minus y square x square minus y square divided by a by a minus b is equal to x y by h okay so from the question you can definitely make out that the a and b is basically equal to a is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus of 3 so the equation of the pair of angle by set will be equal to x square minus y square divided by a value is equal to 2 and b value is equal to minus of minus 3 so minus of minus 3 will be equal to plus of 3 which is equal to x y divided by h and the value of h is equal to half and the value of h is equal to half because 2 h x y is present and in the in this given equation it is x y so from here you can solve it as x square minus y square is equal to 10 times of x y okay so the equation of the angle by setter will be equal to x square minus y square minus 10 x y is equal to 0 is equal to 0 all right so with this the right answer to this particular problem will be equal to option number b so the option number b is equal to the right answer to this particular problem i hope this particular solution was clear all right so let us with this let us move to the seventh problem all right the seventh problem is again a problem which basically includes the odd center so i hope this type of problem is a very simple problem okay but since again i have already solved the problem which is basically an auto center and this problem was repeated again in j means in the same year but in different shape so you can understand the importance of auto center circum center centroid so these are basically very important topics on this chapter of straight lines okay and as well as you need to focus on those topics of where you basically have to calculate like this types of problems okay pair of straight lines so these are basically question types of uh, direct formula based questions okay so if you know the formula you can definitely solve it all right so you can you can i am leaving this particular problem as a homework as a homework to all of you okay and i will reveal the answers once you are basically able to solve this particular problem on yourself and definitely comment me in the comment section okay in the comment section i will definitely give the answer to this particular problem okay answer in comment section below the video you can find the comment section so in the comment section do you comment me the right option of this particular problem all right so i'm i will be waiting for your comments okay if your comments are very poor then i won't be able to have the motivation to continue this particular series all right so with this let us move to the uh, next problem and the next problem is again a very important type of problem you can see it is again talking about that there is a pro there is a point b and c are basically two points which lie on the line or equation of the line is basically y is equal to minus of x or x plus y is equal to 0 and it is also saying that that b and c are symmetric with respect to the origin so you can uh, visualize the situation as so if you try to visualize the situation that this particular situation as so this is the equation of the x is equal to minus of y line okay because x is equal to y line is this and this is the okay don't go by my diagram i am drawing very poor these days okay so this is the equation of the line and point b and c are basically symmetric with respect to origin that means the point b uh, for the line segment a b and c for the line segment b and c origin is the midpoint origin is the midpoint okay and it is saying that suppose the point a is on the line y is equal to so point a is on the line point a lie on lie on the line no. minus 2x plus y is equal to 2 okay so the the point a basically lies on the line y minus 2x is equal to 2 and it is saying that you have to find the coordinate of point a so point a is basically you need to find the coordinate of point a and such that the triangle abc is basically a right angle is a equilateral triangle that means if a triangle abc is an equilateral triangle and if you know some of geometry okay so the triangle abc can only be an equilateral triangle if this point a is basically is this point a is basically perpendicular from the center because for an equilateral triangle 
all the medians and altitude are basically the same lines are basically the same line that means so from point a if you drop a perpendicular or the altitude this will basically become the median and for the median the for point a to become a equilateral triangle this particular line must be and median as well as must be an altitude that means the slope of so if you know the slope of line bc so what is the slope of line bc the slope of line bc is equal to minus 1 so that means if i need to consider the perpendicular line perpendicular to bc that will have the that means basically ao it will have the slope 1 okay so if the line which is perpendicular to which is perpendicular to bc have the slope 1 and passing through a then this line equation can be represented as so if i we don't know the value of the i don't know the basically point a so i can write this point a as h comma k and this h comma k also lies in this particular equation all right so from here i can write the equation of this particular line as y minus k is equal to x minus h and this h and k also satisfy or basically lies on this particular line so what i can see that a basically lies on this particular line okay a basically lies on this particular line so i can solve this as okay since a lies on the intersection of so so the perpendicular or i can do like this fashion okay so i can consider any perpendicular line passing through the origin will have the equation so equation of perpendicular line true 0 comma 0 will be equal to x is equal to y the perpendicular line passing through a 0 origin is equal to x is equal to y and a also lies on the line y is equal to x is equal to so from the intersection of both this point i will get to the value of coordinate of a so if i solve for y is equal to x i will get minus x is equal to so x is equal to minus 2 and y is equal to minus 2 okay so that means this point a lies on the other side of this triangle okay because there are both possibilities so now i got to the coordinate of point a and if i have the coordinate of point a i can definitely be in a position to find the area of the triangle so area of this equator triangle is directly given by the formula that is h square by root 3 that means basically the height of this perpendicular so the height of the perpendicular if you solve from the particular problem you can see the height of the perpendicular is basically 2 square so i can get the hs 2 square plus 2 square will be equal to 2 root 2 and if you put 2 root 2 in this particular we will get to the value of the area as 8 by root 3 8 by root 3 square units which gives the option number d as a right answer all right so let us move to the ninth problem and this is a problem which is very very similar to many problems which comes up in our means examination paper okay this is a problem of reflection of light after getting striking a mirror and the mirror is a plane mirror which has the equation all right so let us try to solve out this particular problem so it is said that there is a ray of light which emits from origin so if i try to draw the situation so there is a ray of light which passes from origin so after this line after this uh, light emits from origin and then it makes 30 degree angle with the positive direction of x-axis and then it reflects a mirror so there is a mirror which is which has the equation x plus y is equal to 1 and we assume that if it is getting reflected then the front particular part of the mirror is basically the back part is basically silvered and the front part is basically polished so from here if a line which is passing at an angle 60 degree and if you consider the perpendicular okay the perpendicular to this particular plane okay the perpendicular will look like don't go my mind drawing okay the perpendicular to this particular will look like something like this so and if i do this okay if i draw up a perpendicular again from here so that means if a line get in this particular direction and get reflected in this particular fashion okay and following the angle of incidence must be equal okay so what i can say this particular angle is equal to 60 degree that means this particular angle is 30 degree that is the angle of incidence is equal to 30 degree so the angle of reflection is also equal to 30 degree all right so i have the so what i need to find out that the after getting reflected by the line x plus y x plus y is equal to 1 if this line intersect the x-axis okay if this ray intersect the x-axis okay so it is saying like it is going on intersecting in this particular fashion 
it is intersecting the x axis in the point in the point q then the abscissa of x q is basically okay so if it is uh, reflecting like this particular fashion because it depends upon the choice of my normal okay my drawing is not very clear so you can find out if the normal is something like this the angle of incidence will become equal to 60 degree so the angle of reflection will also become equal to 60 degree okay so now what i need to find out is basically what i need to find out is basically for let me get to the equation of line let me get to the equation of line so if i'm saying this uh, origin as o and the point of intersection with the mirror is a so and this is q so i need to get to the equation of line ab equation of line sorry ao sorry the equation of line ao so let me get to the equation of line ao okay so the what will be the equation of line ao so the equation of line ao will be y minus 0 is equal to what is the slope the slope will be tan of 30 and tan of 30 is 1 by root 3 into x minus 0 so the equation of line ao so the equation of line ao is equal to x y is equal to x by root 3 so this is the equation of line ao okay so if i have the equation of line ao okay if i have the equation of line ao now i have to find for the so the image so the image of this particular line so the image of this particular uh, of q i mean to say the line q so what we can see by the principle of homogeneity which i have studied in physics okay so if you if this line was if the light source was present as q and then again reflect in the same manner then it will definitely pass through origin okay so from here what i can find out that this particular angle is also equal to 30 that means the slope of the line the slope of the line the slope of the line aq is equal to tan of tan of 120 degree and that is basically equal to minus of root 3 all right so so what another approach i can also apply is basically so if you know that this particular point on getting reflected by this particular mirror will be like this particular fashion that means this is point q dash and if you have studied this particular prince concepts that whenever it is a plane mirror so if you consider this is a plane mirror okay so there is a ray, light ray which is coming out from this particular point o and this is getting reflected in this particular fashion okay this is the normal and this is getting fashion in this particular fashion then what you can understand is basically if this is the point q which is lying on the reflected ray and if you reflect this particular if you reflect this particular along this plane mirror and this is q dash then this o and q dash basically lies in the same line same incident ray line okay and then this particular q dash and o lies on the same incident line okay so by using this particular important property okay so if you use this particular important property only then only you can uh, simplify your number of steps okay so in order to get to the uh, image of a point on a straight line so if q has a point in, uh, coordinate h comma k so what is the coordinate of a q dash that is the image of the point in this plane mirror and we have studied the principle that is basically the coordinate of image is basically x minus h so it, this q dash has a coordinate x comma y so this is x minus h by x minus h by the coefficient of the uh, the reflect of mirror equation okay the, the x coefficient of the uh, equation of the uh, plane mirror okay so this is one and is equal to y minus k which is equal to one is equal to minus two times of minus two times of and now you have to put h and k in the equation so you will get uh, h minus one divided by two okay divided by a square plus b square uh, so that is equal to two so from here two and two get cancelled and if you see you will get to the equation as y is equal to so from here you will get to the equation of y is equal to one sorry x is equal to one and if you solve for y you will get to the value of y as okay you'll get, because a q is basically a point because q is basically a point on the x coordinate so they will have the coordinate as h comma zero so in place of this in place of k we have to put k is equal to zero okay so k is equal to zero so from here if you solve the value of uh, y you will get is basically one minus h so from here you get to the value of y as one minus h and you know that the q dash the q dash is a coordinate of point q dash okay so the q dash lies on the line y is equal to x by root 3 okay y is equal to x by root 3 then you can put this this particular to solve for the value of h and h is basically the abscissa of the point q okay so if you put this this 1 minus h is basically equal to 1 by root 3 
So from here, if you solve, this will be root 3 minus root 3 h is equal to 1 and h is equal to, so from here h is equal to root 3 minus 1 by root 3. So from here you get to the value of h is equal to root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and this is the root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and if you rationalize this with uh, multiplying with root 3 on both the sides, okay. So if you, or you can rationalize the denominator as root 3 minus 1 into root 3 plus 1 divided by 3 root 3, sorry 3 plus root 3, okay. And this will become equal to a square minus a minus b into a plus b is equal to a square minus b square and that will become equal to 3 minus 2 and 2 by 3 plus root 3. So you can definitely rationalize the numerator to get to the form of the answer and that is basically the answer to this particular problem is option number d. Okay. So this has the answer which is option number d. So you can definitely solve this particular problem very easily. All right. So if you are knowing this particular problem concept, okay. And if you are not, if you are someone who is currently getting this particular concept as something as new and you are in a, in a very small period of time and you are not in a position, then definitely try to understand these types of uh, properties, okay. If you know this property, then you can definitely uh, easily solve the problems of J mains, okay. Because in J mains, you can definitely guarantee that there will be a question on straight line in any one of the shape which will coming from the reflection of a line okay by a mirror okay so definitely remember this particular property so this is a very very important property i'm marking it as two star you must remember this particular property all right so with this let us move to the last problem in today's pro uh, previous sessions and this is a very important question okay not very important by the sense of concept but the question looks very difficult okay because people who try to understand this particular problem at first definitely goes on leaving this particular problem because this has too much of data involved. So for the very first thing, I mean studying this particular problem, it is saying that m1 and m2 be the slope of the two adjacent sides of a square. So from the very first thing, if they are m1 and m2 are basically the slope of the two adjacent side of a square, then I can definitely write the product of their slopes is equal to minus one. Yes, I can definitely write the product of the slope is equal to minus one because because for perpendicular line the slope product of the slope is equal to minus one okay so that's a very tedious thing and it is also saying that of a square side a and the square has a side a such that this particular equation is valued okay that is a square plus 11a plus three times of m1 square plus m2 square is equal to 20. it is saying that one vertex of the square is given as 10 into cos alpha minus sine alpha comma 10 into sin alpha plus cos alpha for alpha belonging to open interval 0 to pi by 2. So for alpha belonging to this particular, the one of the vertices of this square is given as. And the equation of a diagonal, and the equation of diagonal, equation of diagonal is, so x into cos alpha minus sin alpha plus sin alpha plus uh, cos alpha y is equal to 10. So if you put, if you put for, this is the equation of a diagonal. So you can assume the question to be given as this is a square, okay. And one of the diagonal is given something like this, okay. One of the diagonal is given as this, okay. And the, so from one diagonal, we can definitely or easily obtain the other diagonal, okay. Because the, in a square, the, the diagonals are basically perpendicular to each other. Okay. So if one of the diagonal is given in this particular fashion, the other diagonal ha will have the equation that is in place of mine, uh, how to just change the, the sign of the y, uh, coefficient of y with a negative sign and definitely replace with a constant in the constant part. Okay. What we can see, okay, the other diagonal, the other equation of a diagonal can easily be obtained. So the other diagonal is basically x into cos alpha minus sin alpha minus of y into y into and we have to just change these particular values okay we have to just interchange this okay and we have to just interchange them we have studied these things okay so just interchange the coefficient and replace the sign of y with a negative sign so we'll get sign this will be minus of sin alpha plus of cos alpha is equal to zero so this is the other other diagonal equation so you can get to the other diagonal equation as this particular value all right so what you can check that this is the one vertex which is given as so 10 comma 10 into cos alpha minus sin alpha comma 10 into sin alpha plus cos alpha now if you put 
this particular coordinate which is alpha so which i am rating it as a and this is b okay so from here from the particular problem if i say if i say that this is a one vertex which is given as a so the vertex a basically satisfied the equation of the other diagonal the equation of the other diagonal is basically satisfied by this other vertex okay i am thinking the vertex the other diagonal I am assuming the equation of the other diagonal which is perpendicular to each other is equal to some constant and since a will pass to the other diagonal that is basically make the equal of the value of the constant is equal to zero so that's how I obtain the equation of the other diagonal I hope this particular thing is clear now what an important observation that I can see that if the point b is equal to zero comma zero then then the point b will also satisfy the equation of the other diagonal and if in doing so if the origin also satisfy other vertices okay so if the point of so from here so if i have this two okay so or you can do like this if you have this two diagonal equation this is the second equation the first equation so on solving the first and second equation i get the point of intersection of diagonals as 5 into so if you solve this two equation then you get the equation of the point of intersection of the diagonal or the midpoint of the square as 5 into cos alpha minus sin alpha comma 5 into cos alpha plus sin alpha this is the intersection point of the diagonals and if you look at this particular a the intersection point that is i am labeling it as o and b so what i was saying that 0 comma 0 lies on this particular line is very good true because if you look at this particular midpoint of a and b so if a b is basically equal to 0 comma 0 then only the midpoint is equal to 5 into cos alpha minus sin alpha comma 5 into cos alpha plus sin alpha because the coordinate of point is 10 into cos alpha minus sin alpha comma 10 into cos alpha plus sin alpha so that means o is a midpoint only when b is equal to origin that means the point b is basically equal to 0 comma 0 and in a triangle in a square sorry in a square the length of the diagonal is basically the side into root 2 the length of the side into root 2 so this is basically equal to so if i have to find out the length of this particular line is basically equal to 10 into cos alpha minus sin alpha whole square is also whole square square root of plus 10 square that is 100 into cos alpha plus sin alpha whole square and in doing so we will use the identity that is cos square alpha plus sin square alpha will be equal to 1 and similarly sin square alpha plus cos square alpha is also equal to 1 and the term which gets cancelled out basically plus of 2 times of cos alpha sin alpha will cancel out with minus of 2 times of cos alpha sin alpha that will cancel out and the term left out will be basically equal to the 1 and the 1 term that means this particular will be equal to that is a root 2 is equal to the a root 2 value will be equal to 100 square plus 100 square that is root under 200 and that will become to 10 root 2 so if 10 root 2 then the value of a is basically equal to 10 that means the length of the side of the square is equal to 10 units so from here i got the first question first equation okay the first equation which basically you are giving us to me that is a square plus 11a plus 3 times of m1 square plus m2 square is equal to 220 i can definitely solve out because i got the value of a as 10 so a square will be 100 and 11a will be equal to 110 so i can write this 3 times of m1 square plus m2 square i am doing this in a very rough okay just bear with me okay i am not giving you a fair notes then i am trying you to solve this particular problem not i am giving you not a good note okay 220 minus 100 minus 110 so this will be equal to so this is 210 and this will be equal to 10 so from here m square so from here i get to the value of m1 square plus m2 square is equal to 10 by 3 and we also have the equation m1 into m2 is equal to minus of 1 so if you solve this particular i can definitely directly see in like this fashion if you put in place of m1 in place of m2 is equal to 1 by m1 so you can solve this and you will definitely get the value of m1 square is equal to either 3 or equal to or equal to uh, 1 by 3 okay so in that particular scenario m1 is equal to root 3 or and m1 and m2 is equal to minus of 1 by root 3 or the vice versa can be possible okay so we got the value of m1 square okay and since m1 square basically represent because we know the slope slope is equal to tan alpha tan alpha the slope square is basically tan square alpha and the question is asking you for the value of this trigonometric identity that is 72 times of 72 times of sine to the power 4 alpha plus 
cos to the power four alpha. Okay, cos to the power four alpha plus a square. Oh God. All right, all right, all right. I just mistook it. Sorry. So I was here in this particular problem. I got to the value of m1 square plus m2 square is basically equal to 10 by 3 and m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1. So from here, I got to the value of m m1 and m2 square value can be either equal to 3 and 1 by 3. Okay. And what we know that the slope is basically equal to tan alpha term. So if m1, if I say the m1, m1 basically represent m1 square is basically tan square alpha. Okay, so what we are trying to find for there is 72 times of sin to the power 4 alpha plus cos to the power 4 alpha plus a square minus 13a plus of 13. So if we solve this, we can definitely solve it by. So uh, what I can apply, I can apply the principle that is m1 square. Okay, so I, what I can do. So the slope of the sides are basically tan alpha and other slope is basically minus of cot alpha. Okay. So what I can do, I can I can take this cos alpha is 1 by sin alpha uh, 1 by sorry sorry. I can write this uh, sin alpha okay in uh, in the way of tan. Okay. So I can write sin alpha uh, if I divide by cos alpha, so this will be become equal to 10 to the power 4 alpha plus 1 divided by so what I did, I did division by uh, uh, division by cos cos square alpha ka whole square. So that will make it. So cos square alpha is basically equal to one plus tan square alpha. So that will be equal to. So using the trigonometric identity, one plus tan square alpha ka whole square is basically the value of this particular thing. Plus a square is hundred minus one thirty plus thirteen. And if you solve this, if you solve this on your own, so you can solve this on your own as one twenty eight. The answer will be equal to one twenty eight. So I hope this particular solution was clear. All right. So yeah, with this option number D is basically the right answer to the particular problem. So this is a very important problem. Okay. That I will start mark this particular problem because many students will definitely looking over the data of this particular problem will definitely skip this particular problem at first. All right. So this is a very important problem that I would require all of you to give a eye on. Okay. So with this, I come to the end of the top important uh, 10, 15 or uh, 10 important question on straight lines. Okay. So that was my take on 10 important previous year questions on straight lines. I hope you have enjoyed the session and you have understood the importance of this particular problems because these types of problems will only be repeated in an examination. Okay, you can definitely find these types of similar types of problems will be coming up for your JMS paper. Okay, so all the best for your uh, upcoming examination and keep watching and keep preparing. So if you are new someone who is new to this particular platform, then definitely consider subscribing to this particular channel if you find this art useful. With this, I take a leave and thank you.